Hey everybody, what's it, Fox Gaming here? So today I would like to show you a build that I've actually been working on since TU8. Uh, I decided to put together a 100% Hasbro build, and since TU11 came out, I've finally been able to perfect this build to the point where I don't need to run um, Hasbro mods because of agnostic mod slots. I can really min-max the build in terms of damage and also be completely hazard immune. Backfire really fits this build very well as um, you know we get massive amounts of critical hit chance and da or damage in particular should I say which obviously you never get running a Hasbro build and the Hasbro build removes the weakness of the uh, Backfire because it gets rid of the bleed altogether. So we're getting the strengths of both builds whilst reducing the weakness just with the Backfire covering the base weaknesses of the Hasbro build and of course vice versa. The way that we have achieved this is only two ways to achieve Hasbro in game purely from gear. One is with Eclipse, which I absolutely do not recommend that you use, and the other is with 511. So what you need to farm for is three pieces of 511, two pieces of Seska, and one piece of Yarl. Um, just screenshot that build if you need to. Actually, that background is a little bit bright, isn't it? Screenshot the build if you need to. You need to have every piece rolled into max hazard protection, and then the secondary attribute needs to be either critical hit chance or critical hit damage. If you're able to do what I've done, and bear in mind this has taken months to farm these pieces with a lot of help from my, my friends and my clan mates, then you can have th uh, critical hit chance on three of the pieces and critical hit damage on the other. But ultimately you need to be hitting the chance cap on this build because backfire will fill in the rest for you. So don't worry if your critical hit damage isn't as high as mine. The most important thing is the critical hit chance. What this build essentially allows us to do, being as tanky as it is, and with all of the damage that we have from the weapon, and of course Intimidate and Adrenaline Rush, is play very aggressively once we've built up some stacks, um, and have a very hard hitting build that's completely hazard immune, so it has a lot of strengths this build. The one place it doesn't um, do very well against is um, against Armour Regen, or should I say your lack of Armour Regen will potentially cost you. Because it's so easy to spec into Armour Regen these days with Bellstone being included and the Murakami Knees. Um, you know, we don't have that luxury. So for the most part, people play shotguns with a healer. That is the meta at the moment. Lady Death and Shotgun up close and one healer. This build excels in that environment. You will destroy other teams if you run this build with a healer in your team and a, bunch, a couple of shotgunners with you. So I'm solo queuing. I don't have that luxury, of course. Or at least there's a chance that I don't. So, three pieces of 511 gives us 10% has pro, along with the health and incoming repairs. Incoming repairs is really good, but the health is actually pretty useless. Um, the two Seska gives us the critical hit chance and has pro, which helps to fill in our chance a little bit. And the one yell gives us the has pro as well. If you don't have 100% or 10%, sorry, rod onto every has pro piece, um, or every piece here, you will not hit that 100%. You get 30% from the three brand set bonuses that we're using. You get 10% from your watch, so that's 40%. And you get 60% from all six of these having 10% on them. That is the only way to hit 100% on this particular build. So you will need to farm. You will need to max the Hasbro on your watch. Um, this is definitely designed to be a build that is a side project and not a main one. Because if you just try and farm this right off the get-go, you'll go insane doing 511 missions. So just keep an eye out for pieces that are good. Stick them in your stash. This literally took me two months to complete. And I only completed it last night because I got this chest piece. And obviously the backfire only came out um, last week anyway. So that was the final part of the build. Um, but now is the time to start farming for it because this is really good. So as I said before, I've got Hasbro and crit chance slash crit damage. I'll quickly show you what the piece is. Crit chance on the chest, crit damage on the holster, crit damage on the knees, crit chance on the gloves, and crit damage on the backpack. We are using Adrenaline Rush with this build because the three pieces of 511 and the Yarl always roll as blue. That makes us a four blue, two red build, which is perfect for this. That's exactly the place I like to be with close range builds. Either three blue for, for Conflict or floor, uh, four for the Dark Zone. But as we have no armor regen, I just think four is perfect. So I'm actually really happy with how this has turned out. And I wouldn't even change how many blues are on here now that I've tested it. Because we have four blues, Adrenaline Rush gives us even bigger stacks. It is only 10% per enemy in um, PvP, but that's 10% of 1.5 million. If it was 1.1, that would be a lower amount, and therefore it would last for a smaller period of time, which means my bonus damage is also reduced. So the four blue works really well there. As a result of all of those pieces in conjunction with the crit chance that already comes on the weapon, my total crit chance is actually just about 62%, but just over 60. Just aim for that 60%. You need to be hitting that. I wouldn't go for 57, 56. Just go for go for 60. It's more important. Use your mods, um, you know, farm your gear pieces, and everything else you can put to crit damage after that. 
I've been able to hit 120 over 120% with this build, which is very hard unless you've got it as min-maxed as I have. But again, just to reiterate, this build has come from months of hard work and farming. And I don't solo queue farm at all. It's a waste of time, in my opinion. If you're ever farming gear, you need to be doing it with your friends or your clan mates because they will drop stuff for you. The Hasbro is, of course, at 100%. So this is amazing because, uh, again, another reason this build excels in TU11. With the agnostic mod slots, I don't need to worry about having 511 with blue or Yar with blue um, and Seska with blue as well, actually. So now I have three red mod slots to boost my crit damage even higher. Um, of course, with 100%, I wouldn't need to worry about those anyway. So this is just a nice little way to buff the damage since TU11. Um, Bleed and Blind are really good because Trauma is quite popular at the moment. Uh, Eclipse had a damage buff, so that really hurts now, uh, annoyingly. Burn obviously doesn't hit me. Disorient, you get that from Hunter's Fury, and for some reason, loads of people are using the Banshee Pulse at the moment. I've noticed you're immune to that. You can't be EMP'd, and that's true for your decoy as well. Your shield can't be knocked out. Um, you can't be riot foamed. Poison is only PVE, and you can't be shocked, which is starting to creep in a little bit more um, as you can no longer shock your teammates, but you can still shock yourself. Uh, you can also riot foam yourself now, which is quite hilarious, but ultimately, none of these things will happen to me. The skills that you choose to use are up to you. I'm still going with Firewall because I like the fact that it gives my teammates 10% extra um, damage to any enemy that I'm within 10 meters of. And as Intimidate is within 10 meters anyway, that is where I'm going to spend most of my time. Um, the Firewall Shield gives me 12% additional damage and it gives that to anybody that's behind me in the blue cone of my shield when I use this. It's very good if somebody pushes me when I'm low health as I don't have the armor regen. I tend not to start the fight with this unless I'm concerned that they are going to kill me. Um, but at that moment, I'll just pop this out and that way I just stay alive for a little bit longer. EMP Jammer is my choice here um, purely because it's great for me getting up close into those enemy skills and EMPing them. Mortars, that kind of thing, stingers. Um, Seeker mines, drones, decoys, you know, it's my job to get up front there and, and deal with those as I'm hazard immune, so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Decoys work really well with this build, stinger hives and seekers work really well, defender drones, you can use whatever two skills you want, but the EMP I think is a really good choice. Um, of course we all know about the weapon anyway, I'm not going to go into too much damage about this, but I will leave that there if you do want to go through it. The bottom part that gives us the bleed, which is kind of the, how they've balanced this weapon, has been removed. So quite simply, just by firing a bullet into an enemy, we gain one stack. We can have a total of 200 stacks, but they do only last for 10 seconds. Although each time you fire a new bullet, that time it is refreshed. So the way that you want to start each um, game in conflict or in the dark zone is to shoot from distance, well outside of your intimidate range. You want to build up some stacks first, because ultimately, like all Hasbro builds, the base damage of this build is low <coughs> in comparison to a, a fully optimised Lady Death or shotgun build without Hasbro on it. Of course, the backfire makes up for that, but it doesn't do it instantly, so just bear that in mind. You do need to play differently. If you look at the side of the gun, you will see it says zero. Each bullet gives me one, whether it is or is not a crit, and you'll just watch that damage absolutely, absolutely fly up. So, yeah, um, you know, I, I like to build it up against decoys. If an enemy is using a decoy, don't shoot the base. Shoot the player part of the decoy, the projection. It counts as damage, so you build stacks, but you can get roughly 100 stacks before it breaks. Um, so it's a really effective way of building some damage um, in between fights or if, you know, they're using a decoy and they've run around the corner, just pop a couple of shots into it to refresh that 10 seconds um, or just as much as you need to, and then you can continue with the fight. It is harder to retain the critical hit damage buff in PvP, in conflict, but in the dark zone it is incredibly easy. I find for the most part I'm at around about 50 stacks per fight for uh, conflict and uh, anything up to 200 in dark zone. You know, usually 50 to 150, but you can easily you can easily max out on that. And bear in mind, if you are able to do that, you'll be sat at a build that is hazard immune with four blues and a strong shield, 60 chance, and well potentially 320 odd percent crit damage. That's obviously hard to build it in the way that I have, so don't worry if they're not that high, and it's also hard to build max stacks, but you see the point I'm getting that at. I didn't want to release this build in, my, in its original versions. You know, my very first version in TU8 didn't, even, didn't have, well, Adrenaline Rush didn't exist then, so none of that was even on here. It was versatile and something else, I think. I can't even remember. Um, but I didn't want to showcase this build to you until I got it min-maxed. That's not to say that you shouldn't use it if you don't have a min-max one like I do, um, but you will notice a difference if you do. Let's go skirmish. So we're up against Vanguard Companion. Okay, interesting perpetuation on the SMG. That's kind of strange, but I'll see how it works. Full tank build. This, by the way, these guys are great. If you come up against the pistol build with a um, 
ball walk, just even from absolute ma maximum range, build loads of stacks off of them. Because they won't notice the shield taking any real damage. But all of a sudden, you're walking into a fight with 100 plus stacks. And that means that you're going to be sat at well over 200% crit damage, which is taking you into Lady Death territory. And you're going to be able to do similar damage to that when you build up that level of stacks. But obviously not without, you know, without... Um, all of the downsides of a Lady D build, which is the low house pro. Yes, that comes with multiplicative damage as well. So, you know, as I said at the start, they will always do more damage, but this can get pretty damn close um, quite easily, in fact, without even building max stacks. And yeah, your house pro as well. You're fully house protected. So, yeah, if you see big tanks in the team, if you see people using pistol builds or bulwarks, which are also quite popular. Ah, we've lost the player. Amazing. Um, then. Focus them first. Uh, like I said before, just build stacks and range first. That's always the way to play this. And it's brilliant because they don't think you do much damage. They'll get close in your face. Your Intimidate will kick in. You'll whip out your shield for the extra 12%. You've already got 30, 40, 50 stacks. You will melt them. And if you've got healer on your team keeping you alive, you can just fight in the front lines constantly without having to worry about building an armor regen, tank, or you know, a traditional Lady Death or shotgun build. You've you just got loads of damage, loads of survivability. And you'll annoy their, uh, their Eclipse users. Right then, 3v4. Let's see how we do. This will be a bit of a rough game as we're only, uh, only a three man. So apologies if the gameplay isn't great. Um, one thing I ask of all of my builds is try them for yourself before you judge them. Um, you know, I've had comments on pretty much all of my videos. People saying that they didn't like the build. Um, and I've just said to them, you know, try it first. You know, make up your own mind once you've actually tried it, and then you will uh, you really sort of see the benefits. And that's the only thing I ever ask. See the stacks inside of my gun there. Oh, I'm starting to get some big stacks ramped up now. Is everybody dead? No, I got up to 68 stacks. So you saw that I was doing some huge damage. Apologies, my dog seems like it can hear something in the background. This is the downside to owning a small dog. They uh, bark at literally every noise that ever exists, ever. It's also good to run a booster hive so you can help your teammates out. Build up some stacks. Stacks. This is where you really want the healer. Yeah, I'm not going to survive that fight. I'm going to dip. Oh, run away. Immediate medical At least I've got no bleed, though. Can I make it out? No! I could have stopped to heal, but they would have caught up to me. Is my teammate going to push this? Ah, oh, they didn't online. push it. I suppose we are only a three-man, aren't we? I saw a guy just around the corner, so... Oh, actually, he's a bit further back than I realised. But yeah, obviously in that situation, if you were bleeding and trying to get away or burning, it just makes it harder, and that would have killed me. Um, you know, I, we're only a three-man team at the moment, so I didn't have the luxury of having my teammates there to support me. And uh, as I say all the time, I always play conflict with my clan, apart from when I'm getting content out. So we would usually have a healer in that situation if I wanted to play this build, um, or possibly a tank or something. Oh, hello. So look, you see, I'm not in Intimidate range, but I'm just going to use this opportunity to build stacks so that when I do get close, it's going to heal. Get the old EMP off, which he can't do to me. And he's dead. That's a grenade from somebody else. They're probably going to be up top. The boost is being taken Let's go. Oh, we've got somebody in range of us. Where are they? I'm so confused. They're behind. Oh, no, they're behind. I was so confused. I saw the adrenaline rush proc there, but I couldn't see him. Um, if you guys are watching that back and that's really obvious, please don't laugh at me because when, when I'm in the middle of the game, I do sometimes get tunnel vision and <laughs> just don't see people. But I straight up did not see that guy until I started firing at him. 
if you can get some in your team to run their shotgun build with coyotes, you'll get 25% additional crit damage right from the get-go. You're too strong for them. Now, considering we're a man down, we're doing quite well here, actually. I, I do very much think I'm being carried by my teammates. Um, but I'll take it. Wow, what was that shot? Somebody just, oh, somebody just sniped me, I think. Yeah, he's using a sniper in the distance. That was a big, dirty shot, whatever that was. What did he kill? He's using that. Do you know what? The inspection system in this game is absolutely awful when you're in um, PvP, when you're in conflict. They need you to just outright remove it uh, and leave it to Dark Zone and everywhere else where you can inspect people that are close by, because you could, it never works. It's never worked since day one. Um, half the time you try and inspect at the start of a game and it gets stuck on somebody. I think they just need to outright remove it. It'd be quite nice to load into a game without people knowing what your build is. That's how it used to be in Div 1. You'd have to try and figure it out just purely based on their, what their gear set looked like when you inspected their character that way. Friendly claiming the supply drop. The supply I was get the extra points at the end of the game. Friendly. How have we done so far actually? Five kills and two deaths. Nice, got a kill right at the end there. Cool. So, that's the build. Um, I'm really happy with it. I, you know, I know it's a difficult one to farm for, but as long as you get the Max Hasbro on there, the other pieces can have lower crit chance or crit damage. You just may need to use your mods to sort of fill in what you're missing. Aim for that 60 chance first, and then put the rest into damage. Get one of your teammates to run a healer um, or a Coyotes with their Lady Death or Shotgun build. You get the 25% off the bat, and that's when this build really comes out. It is, for group play, my favourite build. Even though it's a Hasbro build, you normally only whip those out when you're getting status affected into the ground. Um, I just like to start with this build now it, it just performs so well and it has a lot of synergy with your teammates because you can support them by tanking all of those status guys you're not going to pass on a burn to them from Eclipse because you won't die from it um, you can EMP everything and then of course they can support you with either the healer the tire grade proc um, or just running coyotes with a close range build so you get even more crit damage then this thing will oh, it's crazy if you run this in a team with that coyotes 25% and a healer this build is insane. It's phenomenal. Um, let's have a look at the damage stats and just see how we did there. We were in a three-man game that whole time. So I'm curious to see. You know, I know I died a lot there. Um, but it is what it is. So if you do like the content, please do like and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notifications. Uh, the bell icon so that you get notified of my future content. I usually do PvP build videos. PvE to a, a lesser extent. Uh, and then just I review named items and exotics as well and, and showcase what builds they best perform in. If you like the sound of that, then yeah, give us a like and a subscribe. Thank you again if you did watch this to the end of the video. I appreciate the continued support of the channel. You guys have been amazing. Uh, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.